What is this team's biggest strengths? Yeah, I would say it's Jordan Love in the passing game right now, Grant. And it's I can't believe I'm saying it because at midseason, Jordan Love was last in the NFL in completion percentage, and Green Bay was two and five, and you're thinking, man, they're gonna have to go draft another quarterback. And here we are. You know, I was just writing a story a minute ago, Grant, where their last 10 games, Purdy is number one in passer rating. Jordan Love is number two. He's incredibly sharp. He's throwing on time. He's throwing with anticipation, with accuracy. And all those receivers that nobody's ever heard of because they're all so young, there are guys open all the time. This offense is going to be really, really good in the long run. I mean, it has been the last two weeks, too. But it is definitely the passing game. And you got you know, it's been set up by Aaron Jones, too, where he came back from a knee injury four weeks ago, and the Packers had had zero 100-yard games through week 16, or through week 15. They've got four in a row with him. What are the Packers' biggest weaknesses? Yeah, it's it's the run defense, which is right. I mean, if you're a Packer fan, you're looking at Christian McCaffrey against the Green Bay's run defense. It's like an old bleep, right? It's been bad forever. You know, throughout the Matt LaFleur era, he took over in 2019, Green Bay is either 31st or 32nd in yards allowed per carry. I haven't looked it up lately, so but they're they're right in that range. They've been beaten soundly by most teams this year. Now, with that said, during this four-game winning streak, the last three of those games against Minnesota, Chicago, and Dallas, they played really good. Well, not really good. They played pretty good run defense. But look, Tony Pollard is not Christian McCaffrey. Khalil Herbert, not Christian McCaffrey. You know, the Vikings offensive line, not the 49ers offensive line. So, you know, if you've got to stop Debo Samuel and George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk, it's a lot fewer resources dedicated against Christian McCaffrey. So I, I think that's the real conundrum here for Joe Barry's defense. What does Matt LaFleur bring to the Packers? I mean, from afar, it always looked like the Aaron Rodgers show, but now he's gone. What is Matt LaFleur's imprint on this team? Yeah, it's it's the scheme. You know, when, when LaFleur took over, it was our offense is what he called it. it. was, you know, the amalgam of what he wanted to do and what Aaron Rodgers liked. Look, that was the way to go. I'm not criticizing the way it was. If you got a, at the time, two-time MVP who became three and four-time, you probably want to go with what he wants to some extent, Grant. But this is his offense. This is what the offense that Matt LaFleur wants to run. He's got a quarterback who knows what he's doing with it. And it's the X's and O's stuff, Grant. I mean, they shredded the Cowboys on on Sunday. But there were guys open all over the field. Like Romeo Dobbs hadn't had a 100-yard game in his career. He had 100 by halftime because he was wide open all the time. You know, these receivers are good. The quarterback is good. I think there's something to be said for. And look, it's Kyle Shanahan's offense, too. You've seen it over there. There's just guys open all the time. And whether it's Kyle's scheme or Lafleur's scheme, that's what he's bringing to the table. I mean, I'm not saying he's like this great master motivator. It is X's and O's and kind of knowing – when to push and when to pull back from an injury perspective. But I would say first and foremost, it's the scheme stuff. You mentioned earlier that the strength of the Packers right now is their passing game and that Jordan Love is playing as well as any quarterback in the league right now. How good is he really? And what happened midseason that allowed him to flip the switch? Yeah, I, I do think he's really good. Again, I, I would have bet money that he's going to be one and done in midseason. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go back even further, Grant. When he took over this year, in his first three years, I remember him having one good practice. One. I mean, one good practice as in, woo, that was pretty dang good. Um, that was, I think, the mandatory mini camp in 2021 when, when Rodgers wasn't there and Love had all the number one guys. And he just shredded the defense. But otherwise, there wasn't a whole lot of that. Now, that always came back with the caveat of, well, he's always got, but he's always playing with the backups. So, you know, do these receivers know what they're doing that he's playing with? Um, but he, by God, he is the real deal. He is really good. I talked to somebody a couple before the Cowboys game in, in a league uh, scout, and he predicted he's going to win at least one MVP and more than one Super Bowl. Again, that guy doesn't work here, right? This guy, so he's he's really good. Um, it's the it's the. I think for the first half of the season, he wasn't quite sure. He, it's hard to blame him. He didn't. He's hardly played a relevant rep in three years. Um, but with just time on task and look, he didn't have the old receivers here were second year guys. So there was no veteran guy to lean on. So you've got a bunch of young guys who may or may not know what they're doing playing with the quarterback who may or may not believe that they know what they're doing. So it led to him being a lot of out of rhythm stuff. Well, they're in totally in rhythm now. So with, with the, uh, with the chemistry that's grown there, he is the real deal. Um, he's their guy for the next decade at least. It's funny what you said just now. It sounded so much like 
the Trey Lance story with the 49ers. And when they finally traded Trey Lance, I think a lot of people were saying like, well, you know, look, they got Jordan Love. on the, they, they, they Look, they tried. They ended up with Jordan Love. Didn't work out for the Packers. Didn't work out for the Niners. Got a cut bait. Um, and now look at Jordan Love. I'm not saying that'll work out for Trey Lance. Pick a winner. Tell me why the, uh, this team is going to win. Well, I mean, you have to be a fool to pick against the Niners, right? Um, I, I realize the, the Packers will take exception to that because <laughs> they got all ticked off with you know some of us about the the Cowboys game. Um, but look, the the 49ers, e- even Lafleur yesterday called the 49ers the class of the NFC, and they are right. I mean, they're they're twelve and five. They they hardly played a bad game. The quarterback is peak efficiency, but they got four guys with a thousand yards between McCaffrey, Kittle, Ayuk, and Samuel. The defense, um, to lose, to use Lafleur's phrase, has a bunch of freak shows on it. They have the week of rest. I mean, you, you'd be a fool to get a bet against the 49ers. You know, I think Lafleur, or I think Love gives them a chance, but I just, I just think that's just way too much experienced firepower over there for Green Bay to, to win this one. Thank you. 